You know, I'm sure that uh, we're all just very, very thankful for Reverend Spronk and uh, the fact that he accepted the call here and uh, is able to stand behind this pulpit and uh, be our pastor. Especially right now, I can assure you, nobody, nobody sitting here is more thankful than I. <laughs> because hopefully I never have to stand in front of you again like this. So, um, our program tonight is uh, very simple. Um, so simple, in fact, that we decided not to print it. But it will go something like this, just to give you an idea of... Uh, what to anticipate and how long we might be here. Um, I agree to make some welcoming comments um, and to my fellow office bearers, I said I'm willing to do that, but trust me, they will be brief. They will be brief, at number one. Uh, we'll do some congregational singing. Our choir uh, has prepared two numbers for us tonight. And then following that, Jim Daling and Dan Van Dyke uh, will sing for us. And now Sunday School, Listen up. When Mr. Daling and Mr. Van Dyke are done singing, the Sunday school is going to gather in the front and sing a couple numbers for us, followed by um, a number combining the Sunday school and the choir. Um, we'll sing another number, and then Reverend Spronk, we uh, will ask you to close with prayer. We need to uh, begin this program with prayer, want to begin this program with prayer. And as you might imagine, in preparation for this, I started thinking about what the nature of that prayer should be. Um, and then this morning, uh, we all heard the prayer in the form for the installation. And I thought, you know, that prayer says far more than I ever could. Um, so I want to open this evening with rendering that prayer again. I've taken some liberties simply with some pronouns in that prayer, but it's the prayer that we all prayed together uh, this morning with Reverend Spronk's installation. So let's begin again with that prayer. Merciful Father, we thank thee that it pleaseth thee by the ministry of men to gather a church to thyself unto eternal life from amongst the lost children of men. We bless thee for so graciously providing Faith Church with Reverend Spronk. We beseech thee to qualify him daily, more and more by the Holy Spirit, for the ministry to which thou hast ordained and called him, enlighten his understanding to comprehend thy holy word and give him utterance that he may boldly open his mouth to make known and dispense the mysteries of the gospel and do him with wisdom and valor to rule us a right over which he is set and to preserve us in Christian peace to the end that thy church under his administration and by his good example may increase in number and in virtue. Grant him courage to bear the difficulties and troubles which he may meet within his ministry, that being strengthened by the comfort of thy spirit, he may remain steadfast to the end and be received with all faithful servants into the joy of his master. Give thy grace also to us, Faith Protestant Reformed Church, that we may becomingly deport ourselves towards this, our minister, that we may acknowledge him to be sent of thee, that we may receive his doctrine with all reverence and submit ourselves to his exhortations to the end that we may, by his word, believing in Christ, be made partakers of eternal life. Hear us, O Father, through thy beloved Son, Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen. I would be remiss this evening if, uh, on behalf of our consistory and council, I didn't thank Professor Dykstra 
I don't think he's here. He's got a customary seat right. Oh, he just walked in. Welcome, Professor Dykstra. <laughs> the timing was impeccable. You know, I, I, I had no intention of saying this, but I couldn't help <laughs> be reminded of some things when I saw Professor Dykstra walk in, and now he's smiling, too. Um, I made the comment to him, I think, last Sunday. You have to understand, we all sit in the same place in the council room, and I happen to be the oldest elder. I don't think I look like I should, but I anyway, I'm the oldest elder. I sit right next to Professor Dykstra. It's not always terribly serious, um, our discussions, but sometimes it's a little fun. And I finally made a little quip at him last week. I think he'll, he knows what I'm talking about. It had something to do with length of sermons. And I kind of looked at him and I said, you're going to miss me, Prof. And he's, I won't tell you what he said to me, but he was really quick with a response. <laughs> but I will miss you, Prof. Um, inadvertently, by the way, an announcement was omitted uh, from our bulletin this morning, and it will be in there next week. And I'd like to read that announcement. Um, Again, relative to Professor Dykstra. The council and consistory express their deepest appreciation to Professor Dykstra for his labors in our congregation during the time of our vacancy. The elders, while doing family visitation, also heard countless expressions of thankfulness from faith members for Professor Dykstra in his ability to so faithfully and capably preach the gospel from Sunday to Sunday. And now I quote from Isaiah 52, verse 7, How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him that bringeth good tidings, that publisheth peace, that bringeth good tidings of good, that publisheth salvation, that saith unto Zion, Thy God reigneth. End quote. And to God be the glory for blessing Professor Dykstra uh, in his work at faith in our absence of a pastor. Thank you, Professor Dykstra that on behalf of your council, <clears throat> excuse me, your council and consistory. So now we finally get to the Spronks. Um, and a spe special welcome to the Spronks and the Spronk family. I was instructed how to say the name Spronk. Do I have it right? Spronk. Um, <laughs> welcome. Um, There are, <coughs> excuse me, there are many ways that we can welcome you, but, but let's start with something really interesting here. I don't know how many of you have heard this, but uh, through the course of getting the parsonage ready for uh, the Spronks uh, and their family, a note was found. I'm not sure where it was found, tucked away someplace, I think. And the building committee found this note. And it was a note written by Riley Engelsma and Jessica Lanning uh, some two years ago before the Lannings left. Both were age 11, and it goes like this, a note from two 11-year-olds. Dear new family who moved here, this was a special family who moved to Singapore. Take good care of this house. It has a lot of memories to this house. There were two best friends who played in this house for six years pretty much every day. There is a squeak in the wall downstairs under step six. <laughs> Look, take care of this house. It means a lot to us. In our love, Riley Engelsma and Jessica Lanny. How cute is that? So to the Sprocks, make sure I give you this note. I think it goes with the house and beware of what your children may leave uh, someday when, uh, when uh, you depart that. Um, you know, it's difficult to talk about welcoming the Sprocks uh, to Faith Church without taking a look at what's happened in the past two years. And it's really pretty amazing and certainly evidence of God's blessing upon faith in our congregation here. So these are the numbers, 34 baptisms, 
16 confessions of faith, eight marriages, three deaths, 15 individuals joined faith, seven new families joined faith, and now 250 sermons were preached from this pulpit and 412 hours of catechism instruction were given since Reverend Lanning left. So Reverend Spronk, there's a lot of catching up to do here for you. And if you would like, I'd be happy to repeat those numbers. 250 sermons, 412 hours of catechism instruction, and I can go on and on. But that reminds me, I've never done anything like this before in terms of welcoming a new pastor. As all of my fellow elders and office bearers know, I specialize in being an elder when ministers leave, not when they come. So this is new for me. So I asked one of your peers, well, what do you say when you welcome a pastor? And I happen to know this peer pretty well. Um, and his response was very brief as is his nature. Say welcome and then say get to work. So get to work. 412 hours of catechism, 250 sermons. But on a more serious note, um, we have been through God's providence, God's love, God's grace. We have been cared for in the past two years that we've been without a minister. But yet we didn't have our own pastor. We did not have our own shepherd. And the fact that we have one now, for that we are immensely thankful and give thanks to God for, in this way, caring for us once again. We look forward to having our own pastor. Reverend Sprunk, God has given us at faith you to be our pastor, and he's given us you to be our shepherd, and for that we are very thankful. One of the things that I've learned um, over the years, and I know my fellow elders have too, is so often we need to make visits, um, sometimes not very pleasant visits, and we all look at each other and we all know the only thing that we can bring is God's word. So I could think of nothing better than to read several passages from Scripture in welcoming Reverend Sprunk. And these passages are well known, I think, particularly to our ministers of the gospel. Um, and no doubt are passages that have been used frequently in the ordination and installation of ministers. I'd like to begin by reading 1 Timothy 4. Um, where Paul addresses Timothy, verse 1, chapter 4, he says, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. He continues in verse 6, If thou put the brethren in remembrance of these things, thou shalt be a good minister of Jesus Christ, nourished up in the words of faith, and of good doctrine whereunto thou hast attained. Continues in verse 10, For therefore we both labor and suffer reproach, because we trust in the living God, who is the Savior of all men, especially of those that believe. These things command and teach. Let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of the believers in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity, till I come, Give attendance to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. Neglect not the gift that is in thee, which was given thee by prophecy with the laying on of the hands of the presbytery. Meditate upon these things. Give thyself wholly to them, that thy profiting may appear to all. Take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine. Continue in them, for in doing this thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. And then just a couple verses, again from the book of Timothy, uh, 2 Timothy 4. I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing in his kingdom, preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort 
with all long suffering and doctrine, for the time will come when they shall not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth, and shall be turned unto fables. But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight, I have finished my course, I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. And then finally a passage that's known by all of us so well, and it's the New Testament parallel of the passage that I read in thanking uh, Professor Dykstra for his work. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him in whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. And with that, Reverend Spronk, we welcome you to Faith Church. You have answered God's call. You've heard this morning and in the passages that we've read the encouragement to you and, of course, the reward that goes to the faithful preacher of the gospel of which you preach so well tonight. So, Reverend Spronk and to your family, welcome to Faith. And with that, why don't we open our Psalters and we will sing Psalter number 166, 166 verses 1 through 4. First four verses of 166.
While the choir is coming up here, I can't waste this opportunity to put a plug in for the Choral Society to the whole congregation, captive audience. So here it is. Uh, we're a sizable church and we invest some money every year for a Choral Society. And I'm not here to guilt anyone, but these people are here to, uh, because they enjoy it. They're not here because they feel they have to be here. And I promise you would enjoy yourself if you come to choir on Sunday afternoons. We have about six more from other churches that aren't here, but these are our faith members, and we would strongly encourage you to join us in singing praises to God. We're going to sing two numbers, I Hath Not Seen and I Will Exalt Thee.
have a few comments, but they will be brief. <laughs> the last time somebody said that, we sat and listened for 15 minutes. <laughs> this is, uh, what? No, 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 no. <laughs> hey, the committee that set this up, they were the, the not so smart ones for asking me to come behind the mic. It's their fault. <laughs> But a wise man told you, Jim, right, to get to work, right? Welcome and get to work. Well, this is how you do it. We're going to sing a song called Now More Than Ever. Actually. We're so close. Actually, a prof used those words in his sermon this morning. He said, now more than ever, the word must go out. We're not singing that, but we're singing something in in conjunction with that. We're going to sing now more than ever, I cherish the cross. More than ever, I sit at his feet. I believed that the Lord's way was best. I would read in his word how he mothered the bird and grieved when it fell from its nest. How I felt his delight when I chose to do right and I prayed I would not make him sad. We would meet on the of the day. What a pure, sweet communion we had. Oh, but now more than ever I cherish the cross. More than ever I sit at his feet. All the miles of my journey have proved my Lord true. And he is so precious to me. The road I have traveled has sometimes been steep Through wild, jagged places of life Sometimes I've stumbled and fallen so hard That the stones cut my soul like a knife But the staff of my shepherd would reach out for me and lift me to cool pastures green with oil of the spirit anointing my wounds there i'd rest by the clear healing stream oh but now more than ever i cherish the cross more than ever i sit at his feet all the miles of my journey have proved my Lord true, and he is so precious to me. Is love's old sweet story too good to be true? Do you find all this hard to believe? Has the cruel world we live in so battered your heart that the hurt child inside you can dream? I can't say I blame you, I've been where you are, but all I can say is it's true. You're wanted, you're precious, you're the love of his heart. And the old rugged cross was for you. Oh, but now more than ever I cherish the cross. More than ever I sit at his feet. 
All the miles of my journey have proved my Lord true, and He is so precious to me. Oh, but now more than ever I cherish the cross, more than ever I sit at His feet. All the miles of my journey have proved my Lord true. And he is so precious to me. Oh, he is so precious to me. Yes, he is so precious to me.
rhythm. So one more time, the chorus, Great is Thy Faithfulness. Ready? Two, and. up here only to use the microphone, not to give another sermon. Um, I'd like to say thank you to Elder Decker for his kind words and for the appropriate passages that he read to welcome me and my family. I'd like to thank the choir. Uh, it may not be as large of a group as Mr. Van Dyke would like, but they sing from the heart and they sing well. And I'd like to thank Dan and Jim. No doubt both of them have talent. I'm not sure yet and we'll have to wait to make the judgment which one of them is the bigger character. <laughs> and with apologies to the choir and to the duet, my favorite part, of course, was the singing of the Sunday school children 
Thank you, children, for using your mouths to lead us in praising God. I would like to read one verse, and I thought of it tonight. I was only asked to uh, close with prayer, but I thought of this verse in light of something Professor Dykstra said this morning in Acts 20, verse 22. And this is the chapter that I read during my farewell to the Peace Congregation. And when I read it then, verse 22 struck me then and it strikes me now. And now, behold, I go bound in the Spirit unto Jerusalem, not knowing the things that shall befall me there. Professor Dykstra said, I don't remember now if it was in his prayer or his sermon, the only reason that I came here and accepted the call to faith was because I was convinced of that, that the Spirit bound me to come here to be your pastor. I thank you for the welcome that you have extended to me, but admit that this is, how do I want to say it? I believe God has sent me here, but I left a congregation where we formed a tie, and now I feel like that is missing. And I want you to know that from this point of view, I want to have that again with you. And I pray that God will give us that relationship. Professor Dykstra prayed for that this morning, and I hope that that develops soon. Um, I cannot fault anyone who mispronounces my name because here's part of the difficulty that I feel. I want to know all of you, but it's going to take a while, and I'm sure I will not get your names all down for a while. It is Sprunk. It's not, as uh, Jim Van Overloop's son, Ryan, often said, Sprunk. It's <laughs> Sprunk. But, like I said, I'll be patient with you if you will be patient with me. And I will, tomorrow, get to work. Four catechism classes. I'm looking forward to getting to know the catechism students. And really, that's the only thing I know to do. I don't know what else to do but to work and to pray to God for wisdom. And I ask you to pray, God, give me that wisdom too. Let's close with prayer. Father in heaven, we thank thee for bringing us together. We come together tonight as thy people, under the cross of Jesus Christ, united together in salvation through his shed blood, united together as a congregation in him. We thank thee for giving us the opportunity to worship together today, to come under the preaching of thy word, to be filled with thy grace, and to enjoy thy covenant, and thy presence, and thy friendship, we thank Thee, too, for giving us the opportunity to fellowship together tonight in this program, to be led in the worship and praise of Thy name by those who use their talents to sing, to glorify Thee, and to praise Thee. We ask Thee, Father, to bless what has been done tonight, to bless the beginning of the relationship between a pastor and a congregation, and continue to use us to glorify thy name and to build each other up in the Lord Jesus Christ. Dismiss us with thy blessing. Give us safety in our journey home. And bring us together the next Sabbath day, according to thy will, to worship thee together. Forgive all of our sins. We ask it only for Jesus' sake. Amen.